Hey everybody, welcome back to this. I'm every day is a challenge. This is ah, this is Houston in in summertime, and I vow every year not to be here. Not gonna be here. Why would I do this? It's a terrible place. I go to can I used to go to Canada. I say I go to, I used to, everything pre-pandemic, everything's a used to. And I'm just talking about these old patterns, right? I used to go to Canada every summer. I would go play Ottawa, Kingston, Toronto, and then I'd also go to Calgary for a different week. And it was a blast. And it was wonderful. And the temperatures were great. And this whole summer I've been stuck here in this sweltering sweat box of a, ugh. I don't. I go for walks every day. I used to go for bike rides, and then my bike got stolen. And until I find a new one, I go for walks. Because it's, pro- it's, it's my problem solving method. I get an idea stuck in my head or a thing I can't figure out. And then I just I go wander, and I come back. And it's some of the year it's nice, and then this part of the year it's miserable. So I used to do it on a bike because at least you had some wind in your face. Now I'm just on foot. The point is, it's the heat is offensive. I there's a there's a trail that goes from my house in East Downtown, Second Ward, down to uh, uh, Easter Downtown. I don't know. It goes east. It runs for a couple of miles, and it's it's dotted on either side by trees uh, along this little shady trail, but a lot of it's just open. So. You find yourself going from shady part to shady part, scurrying like one of those little lizards on on Animal Planet, on planet Earth. The little, they sit all still, and then they run. They go get the little next shady spot. That's how you feel. It's how the, it's probably how they felt when they were, I don't know. I always romanticize this part of history, like the old desert travelers, the Bedouins, out like the Arabian Nights stuff. Those guys wandering through the desert during the day. You see just oasis to oasis. That would suck. That would suck if every other shadow I went to was was a mirage. <laughs> What did they do back then if you saw way off in the distance, right? What's the math? The horizon's 15 miles away, I think. I don't know. I might be totally making that up. But say the horizon's 15 miles off. That's how far you can see. And you see a little shimmering glimmer of hope out there on the horizon. And you ready your people. Okay, people, come here. I know I've lied to you before. <laughs> But that's water. And then you talk this mob into following you again and you get all the way to the horizon. Maybe you don't get all the way. You get close. You realize it's just more sand. Oh, what do you, you have to drink your camel. What <laughs> ah, and then the mob eats you, I guess, for whatever. You're 70% water. I can't imagine. So that's my, that's my, that's my walk every day. I go walk through these heat pockets. And it's there's there's chickens in my neighborhood too, which I it's just, I don't know if it's a Houston thing or a Southern thing or it's a something thing. But I just I'm used to having chickens in a neighborhood where I live. I think it's a Mexican thing. It's, a, it's definitely a Mexican thing in Houston. But the Chickens running across the street doesn't even phase me. I don't think twice about it. I hate having roosters in a neighborhood. I had that one time. I was living in this garage apartment in the Heights, and the old lady next door to me, she had a rooster. And I don't think she gave a shit because she lived, it was like her house. Man, it's a great location in the Heights, too. It was like right off a, of, you have to know Houston for this to make any sense, Shepherd call it 10th right there's a big ass kroger right there it's a nice store i used to walk across the street to it every day 
That's how I would buy food. I would just I would go get what I needed for lunch every day or dinner every day. And it was a nice walk. It's wonderful. This lady, this horrible, horrible human, she lived in this house, and then there was this big yard between her house and the place I was staying. And her rooster, she must have done it on purpose. It's like she must have come to the end of her yard to feed these assholes because they would sit outside of the fence underneath my bedroom slash bathroom window. Um, it was a tiny place. And it would just every morning, 5 a.m. And you couldn't go knock on her door. Like, she had one of these places. This was one of those people who, for all I know, she was dead. And and the birds had just now evolved to take over the backyard they might have been self-sufficient at this point uh i really don't know she was she she was one of those she had like 97 cats and you the you go to the house and the fence has the yard all grown up through the fence and there's always like two or three stickers from the city that just say this all the violations this property has statute this or that failure to keep appliances out of your front yard failure to have less than a hundred domesticated animals on the premise, those kinds of things, you know, the the trees in the yard pose a danger to the neighbor's kids. They're just, they're like witch trees. Just, hey, just that, you know, that kind of house. This old lady, you'd go bang on her door and it just, you could smell the pee from outside. That, that house. Anyway, she had chickens. And I didn't, I didn't do it, but I, I, I probably shouldn't say. I took, I had a slingshot, and I had ice cubes. Because if you're ever gonna, if you're ever gonna shoot something with a slingshot, do it with an ice cube. Because you get all the, you get all the mass and inertia of a rock, and all the melting water of no evidence. So, anyway, I took the trees were in the way. The bird lived happily ever after. I'm sure until it died from malnourishment because that woman was dead herself. I don't know. Anyway, this neighborhood is it's nostalgic for chicken reasons. And then there's dogs. There's dogs on the walk. And that's, a, that's an annoyance. If you have a dog and you just let that dog run rampant through a neighborhood, I hate you. It's, uh, I got yelled at the other day. You got to walk. I mean, I, I, I accept it as a part of the, you know what I mean? Like, I'm never going to call the cops on somebody's dog. I, I just, you, it's, it's part of the territory. So I walk with a stick. If your dumb dog comes running up, I'll swat your dog. But usually what happens, especially if you're on a bike, dog will chase you. It's the audacity of dogs to chase somebody in the first place. Right? Why would you... We beat you, you stupid animal. I love my dog. Shut up. Your dog is a your dog is a beaten species. They used to, every dog. Every dog is the same species. That blew my mind when I realized that. Maybe I'm dumb, maybe I'm a latecomer, but every dog it's it's the, they're all the same. Every single dog is the same species. All of them, huskies, those big St. Bernards with the spit just falling out of their face. Fucking whatever a chihuahua is. Those are, it's all the same animal. It's the same genus and species. I don't want to say, say it and be wrong, but I think like canis, can, canine, can, caninus. It's the same. The point is, they, they used to be wolves. They used to be monsters. Every dog you see is the descendant of a monster. And look what we've done to him. You got this thing yapping at me from your purse. If my dog doesn't like you, this isn't going to work. I had somebody say that to me. I swear to you. They said, okay, but if my dog doesn't like you, listen, lady, if your dog doesn't like me, your dog is fucking broken, okay? That is his job. We domesticated them for this very specific reason, to be what we need them to be. Currently, 
a lot of it is is comfort dogs. They don't. <laughs> that's what a lot of them are just in the emotional support category. We've just taken them from. We got huskies. I see them on the streets in Texas, down at the dog park. Huskies. These dogs are meant for the snow and the cold and Yeti hunts and seal expeditions. These dogs are supposed to be pulling sleds with each other in a brotherhood. Rawr, rawr, rawr. You got it down in the Houston dog park where it's 112 outside. Those slobbery St. Bernards just sit there in Connecticut living rooms. They don't know what to do. I'm supposed to be saving a Swiss skier. No, you're not. Just shut up and don't eat the baby. That's <laughs> what do they have to have? They got to have a cask of, of, of ale. Is that what it is? Sherry? Sherry? They got to have sherry around their neck. Oh, to be a St. Bernard without a sherry cask. Everything I don't know. I have no everything I know about St. Bernard's comes from I think Tom and Jerry cartoons or or something similar. Anyway, the point is we beat them and they should shut up. Just sit there in your purse and shake, you stupid dog. Now that was the point. Every time so anyway, when you're when you're riding a bike or you're being chased on foot by one of these stupid dogs, the worst thing you can do is run. And I know it's a cliche, like something, they're probably a cliche. It should be a cliche. If it's not, someone make it a cliche about dogs chasing cars and not knowing what to do when they catch them. That, somebody, somebody wrote something about that. I'm not making that up. They don't know what to do. They have no idea. So I used to pedal as fast as I could to get away from these stupid dogs when they chase me. And now I just slow down and they, they, they just get up to, and they're like, ah, fuck. It's never happened before. Then they just peel off. They haven't figured that out yet. That's most of everything that yells at you. Anyway, thanks for letting me vent. We'll do it again.